Okay, welcome back, and we are moving on to a new topic. Today we're going to talk about congruent triangles notes and involve ourselves or begin to talk about congruent triangles and what that means. So we have an acronym over here on the left side, CPCTC, that we're going to talk about. We have a couple of sentences we're going to fill in the blanks, and then we have a couple of examples down here on the bottom. So let's get started. Remember, it's always a good idea to have plenty of colors out. I've got some highlighters. Um, I've got a pen. I've got a pencil. I'm going to start with my pencil first, but I recommend that you have some highlighters or some colored pencils. It'll help you out. So let's get going. The first sentence that we're going to talk about says, congruent triangles have blank, congruent, blank, and blank, congruent, blank. When we're dealing with triangles, we're talking about angles and sides. So congruent triangles have three congruent angles and three congruent sides. And then the next sentence says, the blank in which the triangle is named tells you blank, blank. The order in which the triangle is named tells you congruent parts. Okay, so we're gonna get down here and I'll talk more about the order in which triangle is named tells you the congruent parts in a moment. Let's go over here to where it says CPCTC. This is an acronym, so each letter here stands for a different word. The first C stands for corresponding. And if you remember from our uh, parallel lines and transversals, the corresponding angles were in the same location on a different parallel line. So with triangles, it's going to be the same thing. Corresponding would be the same angle on the other triangle. So corresponding, the P stands for parts of corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. And we're going to really live with this CP. CTC. So I'm going to highlight. Okay. All right. Let's move down to the second. And we're going to use the CPCTC and we're going to use this. On the second one, let's highlight this one. It says triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. And we set up here that the order in which the triangle is named tells you the congruent parts. So let's talk about angles. Which angle is congruent to angle A? Well, angle A is our first letter in the triangle, and angle D is the first letter in the triangle. So angle A, and I'll make one mark, is congruent to angle D, and I'll make one mark there. So angle D. Angle B, which is the second letter and second angle, we'll put two marks, is congruent to the second letter here angle E. So angle E, I will put two marks. And then angle C is the third letter. So angle F is the third letter. So angle C, one, two, three marks, is congruent to angle F, one, two, three marks. And that's how you can tell which parts are congruent, because sometimes they aren't as obvious as these two triangles, okay? If we go back to our CPCTC, the corresponding parts, corresponding, angle A and angle D, angle B and angle E, angle F is corresponding to angle C, okay? So those are all corresponding. So corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. This statement tells us they're congruent. So each part is congruent. 
Now let's look at the sides. Oh, I don't have line segments. So for right now, put your line segment bars over top. And it says line segment AB. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find line segment AB and I'm gonna put a single mark through. Now, if we go up back to our original, AB was the first two letters. So we look at the first two letters on the other, it would be DE. So line segment DE. And I'm gonna put a single marking here. I'm gonna get a different color to do line segment BC. Line segment BC, I'm gonna go two marks. And BC was the second and third letter, so second and third letter EF. Line segment EF. And I'm gonna make two marks there. And then the last one, I'll use yellow highlighter. It says line segment CA. So the third letter and the first letter, CA, right over here. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. Sorry. And what is the third letter and the first letter? FD. So I'm going to make the mark there because they look congruent. Actually, they should have three marks, not just one. Three marks, not just one. You cannot have the same amount of marks. CA is congruent to, and since we started with C, ended with A, we have to start with F and end with D. So that's the way the order tells you. Now let's look down at a third example. And we have our triangle XYZ is congruent to triangle MNO. And it says find the given side length or angle measure. So let's look at angle X. Do we have an angle X down here? No, we don't. But we have a lot of information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write this information in the given areas. So angle M is 45 degrees. Angle N is 54 degrees. And angle Z is 81 degrees. NO is 29 millimeters. XZ is 39 millimeters. XY is 31 millimeters. As we look at our triangle statement, congruent statement up here, I see that angle X is congruent with angle M. Angle M is 45 degrees, so X is 45 degrees. Angle O is the third letter, is congruent with angle Z. So angle O, angle Z, 81 degrees. And angle Y is congruent with angle N, and N is 54 degrees. So that's how you figure out your measurements. And I'll put it under here. Angle X was angle M, angle O was angle Z, and angle Y is angle N. And that's how we figure out the measurements. What I'd like you to do is do the exact same thing for line segment MN, line segment YZ, and line segment MO, and bring them into class tomorrow. Okay? If you have any questions, watch this video again. Remember to use lots of color to help you enhance your learning. Have a great day.